Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and I'm back with another recap of Tyler Perry Sisters Season 6 Episode 4, Face the Fire. Let's just say this episode was intense, like intense, intense, intense. If Luce could kill, mm, somebody would be dead, for real, for real. So let's get into it. So as y'all already know, the little office scene, that was like super hysterical and like so superly forced. It was like, oh my God, girl, get it together. So y'all already know Zach stormed out of there like without a care in the world that he just left his girl behind to go check out the previous girl he was with. Like, Zach, you losing your mind right now, right? Whatever. So... Uh, Fatima, the strong one, held her composure and she helped both Pam and Andy get to the salon. So she basically drove, um, Andy's car there. So on the way there, Pam, well, in their car, Pam was like, uh, um, dang it. Oh no. Andy was like, can you call Danny and them to let them know that meet us at the salon? So Pam is talking and she was like Aaron said it's my fault and Andy was like really really so they were about to go basically going in on Pam so eventually um Fatima calls Danny and Danny kept trying to say what is it what is it what? everybody was just like listen just get your butt on to the salon and Danny was like where's Andy and Fatima was like she's right here and and Andy screamed, like, Danny, get your behind to the salon. She's like, all right, all right, okay, you scared me. But, yeah, whatever, get to the salon. So, after that, you know, Andy was kind of upset because, you know, Pam said it was, Aaron said it was her fault. Like, Pam, you have some negligence on your part, but still. She supposedly left the curling iron on, but whatever. They all get to the scene. So... Gary's there, Aaron's there, the p firefighters are still there, everybody pulls up or whatnot, and still at this time, Zach has still not went over to Fatima's side to, like, see, like, how she's with all this and stuff like that, he's basically on this side, Fatima's on this side with Andy and, and Pam, so they're all talking like what's happening. All they see is that Karen's salon is boarded up and burned down. They see Karen's car over there. And everybody's like wondering what the what's the hold up and stuff like that. So a few few minutes later, um pulls up Danny and they all ask him what's going on, Pam, what's going on? And Aaron blurts out, she left the curl nines on. And it was like, really? Really? Like it was just too much. Then a few minutes later, um, Sabrina was back home with Bio, and their their lunch day went well. And then a few minutes later, Maurice comes to the door. I first thought it was Calvin. I'm surprised it wasn't him. But anyways, he comes to her house, and they're there, and this was like whatever, interrupted, kind of. So, Maurice, you know how he is with his little sarcastic ways. He was like, thank you, my African prince. He was like, for everything. He was like, listen, I was doing that for Sabrina. And, like, Bio felt a little took in the back by it, but at this moment, Sabrina, she's not picking up on the signs or whatever. Like, something feels, like, out of place. So, basically, Maurice said, listen, I don't want this girl. Like, I strictly prefer penis and he was like that's disgusting and he was like sabrina you don't see how rude he is like if you don't do something about it um make him leave i'm gonna leave and sabrina was just like mm. she really didn't have much to say but whatever so marie basically stood his ground whatever and then eventually bio was like listen i'm leaving so he and he said i'll call you later sabrina so now it's just Maurice and Sabrina, and Maurice told her like, "Listen, he's homophobic. Like he don't have he don't know how to handle like being around gay people because what he what I said to us what I said to him he was like that's disgusting. Like you don't find that like he's ignorant and stuff like that." She was like, "Oh, listen, da, 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 da. 
I don't know, whatever. So eventually, he was like, "I'm." All, she was like, what are you doing here? He was like, I was calling you to tell you that I visit Q and whatnot. And she was like, didn't I tell you to leave this man alone? So she goes to check her phone. She realized she got missed calls from everybody. So she picked up her phone, calls Danny back. Because you already know, once they call Danny, Danny's going to call Sabrina. So she calls Danny back, and Danny tells her, like, listen, come down to the salon. And she was like, what happened? She's like, I don't know. I'm on my way there, too. So she grabs her phone, her keys, puts on her shoes, and her and Maurice head out to the salon. So a few minutes later, back at the salon, uh, Maurice and Sabrina pulls up, and everybody's still asking what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong. Um, Gary was on the phone with the mayor. They still didn't have the information. So one of the firefighters came back and it was like, so who's inside? They was like, it's a dead body. And they all thought it was Karen. So everybody was like, so who's going to call Miss Lisa? Everybody's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And Zach turns his back and he calls Miss Lisa, but I guess she ain't answer. So that was that. So everybody's just all in the frenzy. They're waiting for the medical examiner to come. Yeah, and the medical examiner was there. Yeah, that's because the medical examiner finally came and was like, there's a dead body. So they didn't really say who it was or whatnot, but they just said it was a dead body. So that's how that went. Then a few minutes went by, walks Miss Cameron, like, ain't nothing happening. Like, oh, it's happening to Pam. Like, so after that, um, Karen, everybody was greeting Cameron, like, forever. Zach thought he lost his mind. Like, he done hugged this girl four or five times. Like, don't you got a whole girl over there? Like I said, if looks can kill, that person be dead. Fatima was giving him the stare down of death. Like, Zach, you did not once acknowledge this girl since y'all got to the office. And now you doing this, you acting all extra and stuff like that. I understand she could have died. I understand. But at the same time, it's not about her like that no more. You got a whole fiance. You need to be worrying about her well-being as well. Like, make it make sense. So anyways, once, I guess, Fatima saw how he was acting towards Karen or whatever. He was giving her, like, I think on the third or fourth hug, the girl finally pulled her away from her. And then they was, like, all thanking her. They're glad that she was okay, and that she was in the fire. So Karen asked the medical examiner um, who was inside. They was like, listen, it was an elderly person, and the fire started from the back. So now we realize Pam didn't set the fire. Yeah, Aaron must have felt really stupid. Like, you blaming this girl. Granted, you know, sometimes, I don't know, personally, but I don't know, maybe the new technology, like some curl nines, they have like a light that even though it's off, it still shows a light. So maybe it was one of those type of curlers. But anyways, after they figured that out, they all decided to disperse because they couldn't do that right now because everybody was like hyperventilating and like overwhelmed with the fact that she might be dead or whatnot. So... Um, everybody ran to the, everybody was with their, um, significant others, except for Fatima, because, you know, Zach was hugged up on Karen. So after that, all the girls decided to leave and it was just the boys. So the boys was like, what about us? And Danny was like, what about y'all? And I'm saying like, what about y'all? Y'all was there for more support. I commend all y'all men for being there by sticking by y'all ladies, like do what y'all got to do as men. Like, Zach, on the other hand, you in deep dog. You going to be in the dog house, okay? Because that right there was the utmost disrespectful thing you can do. Granted, you can, you know, hug and then go to where you got to go. But not just stay in that person's face and not even acknowledge that your fiance was there. Like, yeah, you don't do that. That's like disrespectful and rude. I know Fatima was feeling some type of way. So after everybody dispersed, Pam was left there. Pam wanted a ride. Nobody wanted to give her a ride. Uh, tr not Tristan. Preston was like, nah, you better get her a ride share. And he left. So they were going to take Maurice home, I believe. So Pam was like, oh, Pam. Zach said to Pam, did anybody see what happened to Fatima? He was, and Pam was like, listen. 
Um, she left after he was all hugged up on Karen. And did you know where he did? And he asked her, "Do you know where she went?" Oh, she got in the ride share. That was all she wrote. Zach, you are in deep, deep trouble, Mister. Mister, like that was so uncalled for. So he left. Uh, Pam went to go follow behind Preston so he could, she could get a ride home as well as Marie's. So, um, now we go, Fatima, she ended up going to the bar, um, with Angela to sit down and have some drinks and try to do decompress everything that just happened. And she basically tells her like, listen, I feel a certain type of way. And then Angela was like, so what does Zach do next? And it's crazy because she was like, dang, that's crazy. I, all of, all I say stuff like this and y'all be thinking, what does Zach do next? She was like, dang, am I crazy for pulling up with all this stuff? Like, I done been through a lot in this little bit of time that they've been together. Like, she really done put up with a lot. Like, it's not even one. Every time they try to take a step forward, somebody pushed them five steps back. Like, she cannot catch a break, neither one or neither her or Zach, but whatever. So... And just tried to help her decompress the situation. She was like, listen, I understand that, you know, she might have died. But did you feel so a certain type of way thinking that she would be, that she was dead? She was like, I would not do that. I'm not the type of person. Because at first, Angela thought she set the fire. Like, nah, I'm not down like that. But whatever. So, Angela helped her try to see, like, from side to side. Like, didn't you feel a certain type of way when you see um Ian after a certain while? She was like, yeah, but it's not the same. Like, it's a different level of intensity and emotion that would. Zach and Karen that I didn't have with Ian and when I seen Ian, but you know, and but Tim was trying to get that across to Angela, but Angela was not picking up on it. So eventually, you know, they had a little talk or whatnot and then she ended up getting her drink and that was that. So now the girls went to um Andy's house to sit down and, you know, take everything in. Meanwhile, Aaron, he's on the phone going home and he ends up calling Pam again like let this girl's number go so he's to basically talking talking to her and telling her like I'm gonna apologize for everything and you know she in her little snarky ways telling her like, listen why you even call my phone and then they just chopped it and whatever she, she said oh I was, I was it could have been that girl that you was with and whatever but they said some said a few words and then you know that was into that so yeah so now we're back at uh, Andy's house, they want to talk about Karen, see how things are going, and they want to talk about the whole Karen and Zach, or Fatima and Zach situation, and it was like, dang, so what was all that with Zach all hugged up on you? And they wasn't really, Andy was really trying to change the stuff because they didn't really want to get into it, so then Danny was talking about, dang, so what was that? Preston showed up for you? She's like, yeah, I really appreciate that. You know, Mindy, he left her at the hotel to come talk to me, like, and some other things happened. Like, I hope she tell them about, you know, how Jonah came back and tried to do a part two and Preston was there to save the day. Like, I understand it's a touchy subject, but hey, hopefully she get into it. And then also come to find out, um, Karen, she had went to the doctor to check on the baby, whatever. And she found out that she know who the baby daddy is. We all knew who the baby daddy was. Baby daddy is Aaron, Okay. Just by the way she said it, like, we already know, sis. We already know. Also, I left this part out. My bad. The detect Detective Logan went to go visit Q in the hospital. Q is basically trying to get Maurice to get charges pressed on him. But at the same time, Logan was like, didn't you just steal this man's car and do all this? You are a key witness, and I want them two to go down for this, for the robbery. So you got to do a better job of doing your job. So basically, he got to put them in jail, but he can't go to jail for what... what it's, it's backwards, but anyways, Logan's basically just milking Q so he can get a better, bigger promotion. That's all that, That's what it seems to be. That's all it seems to be. Q's loss is Logan's gain, and that's basically what Logan is trying to do, gain up the ranks so he ain't got to do as much work. So, yeah, so we're going to see how that rolls out. And, yeah, this episode, it really wasn't much going on because they basically spent about, what, 30 minutes at the daggone burnt-out salon crime scene. Like, 
Yeah. I can't wait to see what happens in next week's episode. I think Karen finally calls her mom and tells her what's happened because I guess her mom never got her message or anybody's messages or whatnot. And she tells them that, you know, Aaron might be the father. And then on the way home, Sabrina and Danny are talking. And Danny was like, you know that Aaron's the father, right? You can, Everybody know that Aaron's the father. Like, Karen can try to convince others that that's not the case. But we already know. We know, sis. We know. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this recap of Season 6 of Tyler Perry Sisters, Episode 4, Face the Fire. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.